Hi, I'm Gabe Abrams, Senior Software Engineer at the Harvard Division of Continuing Education. And today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about what LTI is and why we need it. Our agenda is pretty short. Um, I'm going to start with an introduction and then talk a little bit about the landscape, the context uh, of educational technology and what inspired the creation of LTI. Then, of course, we'll talk a little bit about what LTI is and how it fixes those challenges. And we'll wrap up with a quick comparison to SCORM and how LTI and SCORM, another standard, um, how they compare with each other. So a little introduction. Um, my name's Gabe, and I sit on two different teams at the Harvard Division of Continuing Ed. Um, one of those teams is the Teaching and Learning Group. And there, I get to think about the challenges that face our classes and try to think about ways to solve them. And then in the software development group, I build educational tools that we use in our classes to hopefully address some of those challenges. I do three different types of work around LTI at Harvard. Um, and the first one is I build LTI apps. So one example is called Swipe In. It is a tool that lets students swipe their Harvard ID as they enter the classroom, and it gives them an attendance point and also intelligently gives them a seat to help them meet new peers. The second category is LTI app management. And, um, and so the project I'm working on there is called In Class. It is an educational technology app store that we are rolling out for classes at Harvard. And it helps people find tools, learn about tools, and install them all in a self-service kind of way so that our classes have better access to all the tools that we've made available. And then finally, I work on um, projects that help people develop LTI apps. And so the main one I'm working on is called Cackle. Um, and then basically it makes building uh, LTI apps easier. But enough about me. <laughs> um, let's talk about the context that inspired LTI. So the world didn't look too much different. Um, we still had LMSs. Those are the um, basically the hub of the course where, um, where people go to find their content. Uh, it's the central location for a course. And everything else is tasked with plugging into it. Um, and so the other things are tools. So for example, a discussion tool. Um, and those tools plug into the LMS so that users can start in the LMS um, and then find their content. Um, and of course, educators and, and technologists search for great tools. And there were a lot of them. There still are a lot of them. There's, you know, hundreds, <laughs> probably thousands of tools. And they all back then worked a little differently. They spoke different languages, they used different technology standards, and what it really meant is that they didn't talk to each other very well. They didn't plug into each other very well. So uh, when a technologist or an instructor or somebody would try to put together their course and their content, um, it often was a weird, you know, a weird process that didn't really fit very well. Technology didn't work with different pieces of technology. And it kind of reminded me of the process of you've got your laptop and an older phone and you're tasked with trying to figure out the right combination of dongles and adapters that will make it so that your phone will plug into your computer. And it really felt a lot like that for tools. Um, so along came the IMS Global Consortium, which was just a, a group that saw this challenge and wanted to create one standard, um, one language between the LMS and the tools. And um, they're not the first group that is trying to do that. Um, there have been many other um, projects in the past that have done the same thing. And so this was building upon past work. Um, but we're going to be talking about this group because they're the ones who created LTI. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the work that they did on the LMS side. So on the LMS side, they put standards in place saying things like the LMS has to accept secure launches. They have to use certain naming conventions. They have to have um, user roles um, and many other different things. 
and defining that standard meant that it was easier for tools to understand what the LMS was going to look like. On the other side, an LTI app also has rules to adhere to. For example, it must accept a launch request. Um, it must also be a web app, so something that can operate in the browser. Um, and it must have different types of configuration um, and conventions as well. What that all really means at the end of the day is that because both players are adhering to these different constraints, at the end of the day, the LMS, which we call the tool consumer in the LTI world, and the LTI app, which we call the tool provider in the LTI world, at the end of the day, they fit together. And it seems like a small um, accomplishment, but it's actually massive. It's so important. <clears throat> what it means is that no matter what LMS you're using, whether that's Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle, some other LMS, um, you can pick and choose from a whole bunch of different LTI apps. Because all of those developers have used the LTI standard, then they'll all plug straight into your um, LMS. So whether that's a discussion board or a peer review tool, a video tool like YouTube or Vimeo or labs, coding platforms, anything, really, as long as both the LMS and the tool provider or the LTI app, as long as they both adhere to the LTI standard, then they'll fit together. So in short, LTI is a shared standard that lets the LMS and an app interact with each other in a super easy way. <laughs> One question I get asked a lot is who uses LTI? Are LTI's users, um, are they all students? And the answer is definitely no. Um, there are LTI tools that are just for teachers. Um, for example, polling software. Um, there are LTI tools that are for TAs. Maybe they're grading tools. Um, there are definitely plenty of users who are students. Um, maybe those LTI tools are virtual labs or other types of content. And finally, there are LTI tools that are for staff and administrators as well. Maybe they're analytics-based for helping inform decisions about the program. Um, and of course, there are tools that uh, are built from teachers and TAs or um, staff and students. <laughs> um, but the important thing to know here is that LTIs span across all of the different parts of education. So is LTI the only e-learning interoperability standard? Where interoperability standard just means um, a standard that makes two different types of technologies, like an LMS and a tool, fit together. Uh, the answer is no. Um, and the one that I wanted to introduce to you today is called SCORM. Um, and I think the biggest picture description that I can give of SCORM is that it is like LTI, except that it focuses more on objects. So again, we have an LMS, but instead of connecting a tool, you're now connecting a course. So think more around content. Um, so it answers questions like, what does a course object look like? What does a test object look like? What um, do scores look like? Um, so all of these types of objects are defined in SCORM. So at the end of the day, the SCORM course is designed to fit into the LMS. So the difference here between LTI and SCORM is that in LTI, you're attaching two separate technologies together. In this, we're completely absorbing content into the other tool. Um, and so for the user, what that means is that with SCORM, content is consumed inside of the LMS. So you, your entire experience happens inside of the LMS. And that's unlike LTI, where you're directed to the tool through that connection um, for their experience. So in SCORM, it all happens in the LMS. In LTI, we send them to the tool for their experience. So just like how LTI helps us connect lots of different apps with our LMS, uh, SCORM helps us connect content courses with our LMS. So whatever LMS you have, you can use that accessibility training or that campus safety training or the Title IX training. And you can just bring that content into your LMS. So side-by-side -side comparison of SCORM and LTI. Um, first off, SCORM is a lot heavier. Um, 
it has a lot more definitions, it's a little bit more complicated. And that makes it better for mandatory or compliance courses. LTI is a little bit more lightweight, which provides more flexibility. And so that makes it better for custom content and custom learning environments. SCORM is designed to connect an LMS to course content, and LTI is designed to connect an LMS to content or learning experiences. SCORM was designed for the Department of Defense, and LTI was designed by IMS Global. And finally, SCORM is most popular with corporations and government agencies, and LTI is most popular with higher education and academia. We don't have time today to go into extreme depth on SCORM, so I wanted to give you a link to a four minute SCORM introduction video um, created by KMI Learning uh, that I found really useful. And the link is bit.ly slash SCORM dash intro. Uh, and that'll take you to YouTube. And that's it for the first half. Um, next time we're gonna be talking about LTI in more depth. So we're gonna talk about installation of LTIs, placement for LTIs, uh, the launch process, and the passback process. And then we're gonna wrap up with some example LTIs um, and a big picture summary. See you next time.